also to welcome you, after which uh, our president will address you and then uh, we'll hand the mic over to uh, the CEO of the ICC. So just to start by introducing our head table, um, President uh, SLC, Olivati Nagasmiti Pala. Um, to his left, the three uh, SLC, Mr. Mohan Silva and CEO, Mr. Ashwati Silva. So handing over to Mr. Ashwati Silva to give you a warm welcome this afternoon. President of Sri Lanka Brigad, <coughs> Secretary uh, Mr. Mohan B. Silva, Chief Executive Officer of uh, ICC, Mr. David Peterson, and the members from the media. First, let me take this opportunity to warmly welcome the media who are present here with such short notice to have an interactive session with the Chief Executive Officer of Sri Lanka of ICC, David Richardson. We, in the morning, had a very constructive discussion, the management of Sri Lanka cricket, and also the members of the Expo with uh, Mr. Richardson. I would also like to take this opportunity to warmly welcome David, who has accepted our invitation, who are here on official visit, to have a discussion with the ACC and also with the officials of Sri Lanka figure. I don't intend to talk along. I wish to hand over the mic to Rai to take the proceedings forward. Thank you. Well, we get some mainly with that. David Jetson Mark now. Happy Aradana Kara. Yatra get some mainly. Happy. एक-एक विशेष ऐसी मां चिलान के पार्क में लेते गए थे इधर इंसान में वे आराम हो रहा आप इधर एशियन ट्रेड काउंसिल है तो आसियान वेद सम्मेलन ने यह उद्देगत तीन दो आनुव सिलुमा संगठन का पार्टी उत्तर सहा सिलुमा दरगाह भी लोगे कोटा स्पाह के नगर ला आसिया वाद एक बहुत अस्पाय थी ये ना आसिया के संबंधन सा कटे हुए चीजें अपने दुबई में थे ना वो त्वरतवाने अभी आसियन के सम्मेलन लाखार की ना बोली सा ये तुलन तरंगा आवली ये वाके ये में पुकुन कंदोरु इंशा करवान पुकुनु तरंग पीड़ांगर पुकुनु है ना देवलु संपूर्ण ये में अधिक्षण या आसियान में सम्मेलन कोलेबरेट के इन्हें पुलाव अब यार आदला करा आईसीसी करा एसीसी करा इकतु इला इलागा वो अनागते संबंधन पटल पर ये इंसान में एक विशेष साक्षात कदुजायसन थी बने ये साक्षात पतना करे ना अब ये आउट जो धाना है पहले हम आउट दे मर आसियान के घर तरंगावले पावतना ये वाके वो ऐसा दासीम पाल और तो देखें देखने के बाद कुछ निर्णय करना और तो विशिष्ट रूप से पाल और तो देखें देखने के निर्णय ये तारका आप भी लिखो साक्षात चक्कर में देखते तो भाई अभी तुम्हारा आराम दान करें संतोष ने तुम्हारे काम नहीं किया ये वाके ये मत शेला का आपके पाल का मंडले या � लंका वो गंतर एक प्रगति है, पहली बात है अभी इतनी बात करा, इतनी बात कर तो प्रगति पे आने की बात करूँ वार्ता है, इतना बस आप तो सुना, शेष एम देशपाल ने पार्टी में किन तोड़ा, विजाता त्रवादी रामों को तोड़ा पटकर कर, बट निकट पाल का मंडल एक पहली नहीं मुक्त है ना सुबह तो वाकी में एक गत प्रगति है, � संतोष इन और गले के कोटा स्कोर है। जब हम इस टोडा सिंगर के कथा करने बात करते हैं, इस भाषा में कथा 
very important for Sri Lanka cricket. Uh, he was uh, here during our Australian tour, uh, uh, met us up in Kandy, and now we are here again in December. See you to visit twice uh, within the span of five months, uh, or four to five months. It's not easy. Uh, his time is pressed with over 100 years, uh, countries being a member of the I ICC. Well, I don't want to take any further time. I can always address you. Uh, most of would like, probably all would like to hear from uh, David. Uh, and uh, I would like to invite him for you to address. Thank you. Chief Executive. Um, it's always a pleasure to be in Sri Lanka. As uh, the President has explained, there are two parts to my visit, really. The, 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 the first one is to do with global development. The ICC has a strategy to develop more competitive teams playing at the highest level. For too long we've had 10 full members and if we're honest with ourselves probably maybe 8 if we're lucky 9 of those full members are competitive you know, uh, at the highest level and capable of winning an ICC event. We need to grow that number to 15, 16 countries. And the likes of Afghanistan, Nepal, Malaysia and various other countries in Asia, in the Asia region, are, it's very important that we can progress their cricket to a level where they can uh, play against the big boys on a musical basis. So the first part of our visit was a meeting with the, AC, the Asian Cricket Council. Obviously we're responsible for global development, we are taking a much more targeted approach and our resources are limited. So number one, we want to provide the guidance, the principles, the overall strategy, but it's important that the Asian Cricket Council, with the resources that it does have, both financial and from a, an HR perspective, uh, that we can make best use of the, those. And that the activities that we can carry out at, at the global level are supplemented by what the Asian Cricket Council can afford to do on a regional basis. So it makes sense, for example, if we are making an effort on the high performance side, if we've got a high performance manager that is working with the top eight associate members globally, of which three or four are from Asia, it makes sense that we use the Asian Cricket Council resources to supplement that and use coaches from the region to provide those services, those high performance services, to another uh, band of, of teams below that, that level. And they can do that across all, all areas, not only high performance, but also on events and on services. So that was the first part of our meeting, uh, first part of our day today. And uh, I think we, we are encouraged by the fact that the Asian Cricket Council do not take the attitude of, you know, leave Asia to us, we're going to be all in powerful, we're going to take control. They're are also keen to work with ICC in this in this fashion so that we are supplementing rather than competing with each other, which is excellent. The second part was more to do with Sri Lanka cricket itself as a full member of ICC and Sri Lanka's role in international cricket. This is an extremely exciting time actually for international cricket. The international game has gone through a period of turbulence which what you as the media have called the, the big three takeover, where the governance, the financial model, the playing structures, the FTP was thrown into uh, turmoil, you could say, by the resolutions that were passed by the ICC back in April 2014. But with a new president, under the leadership of Shashank Manohar, the ICC is reviewing those resolutions and I think is on the verge of putting forward to the board for consideration some very uh, some proposals that I think will do wonders for international cricket. And those proposals will cover the governance area. It will cover a new a revised financial model, which will hopefully provide all certainly all the full members with a bigger slice of the cake than what is currently envisaged. And thirdly, it will hopefully introduce more meaningful competition structures for FTP cricket or bilateral cricket across all three formats. Tests, ODIs and T20. There is still some detail to be worked out, but 
I suppose what we're asking for from Sri Lanka cricket is for Sri Lanka cricket, number one, to see ICC as an ally as opposed to an enemy. We are there as the paternal, maternal governing body of the sport. We're there to work together with our members, not in competition with or in authority over. Uh, that's in the one point. And, and secondly, to play a meaningful role in the discussions that happen at the ICC board. So, the, what happened in, in April 2014 took place really because, unfortunately, countries like Sri Lanka, South Africa, New Zealand were not able to stand up to the, the big boards. And I don't think that will happen again. Um, I think that, as you've shown on the field, Sri Lanka deserves a place at that big table. It needs to stay there and it needs to be a meaningful participant in those discussions whenever they happen. So again, uh, we appreciate the opportunity to come and meet with you uh, to witness the cricket that's been played at under-19 level. Um, I think across the board, whether it's youth cricket, whether it's women's cricket, we are seeing progress. Uh, the depth and quality of women's cricket is actually uh, very impressive. Now, you know, going back five years, if you didn't play for England and Australia, with all due respect, you weren't worth watching. Now, you know, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, India, South Africa, West Indies in particular, who won the World T20 uh, competition. I mean, these women are worth watching. The quality of their batsmanship, their fielding, and bowling has improved tremendously. And I'm glad that to see that Sri Lanka are not uh, neglecting the women's game as well. They also have a, a part for women's cricket, a serious part for women's cricket in their strategy. So well done to you. Um, we certainly see the, the progress you've made in, over the last year or so. And um, very pleased to see the strategy that you have in place going forward. Um, sometimes it's better to have a plan. Well, it's always certainly better to have a plan than no plan. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, Sri Lankan cricket will only go from strength to strength. Thank you. The rankings do a reasonable job in creating at least some context and uh, do a good job in determining at a particular time in the history of cricket who is number one, number two, number three, number four. But having said that, you're quite right, that the, the only real test or the only absolutely fair way of determining who the best test team is, for example, is, would, is to move towards some sort of league structure. Now, you will re recall that at one point the ICC was considering a two-tier test league uh, and uh, I, I suppose understandably Sri Lanka weren't, although I always viewed Sri Lanka as being good enough to take part in the, in the top division, uh, I understand why Sri Lanka were reluctant to go that route. And, uh, for that reason we're talking about an alternative to that which is based more on two groups of equal standard, but playing in each other in a competition which will eventually give us, allow us to play every two years a final, so that you have a test champion at the end of that two-year period. And in that way, if we can introduce something along those lines, and, I don't, and it's not to fate a company, it still needs quite a bit of discussion, but then you are being, you're providing everyone with an equal opportunity. Having said that, there will always be a need, perhaps, for the Ashes to remain a five-test series. But that doesn't mean that we have to say Bangladesh playing New Zealand has to be a five-match test series. Economically, practically, interest-wise, that word is not necessary. So there'll, there'll be elements of slight difference between series to series, but you'll be playing for the same number of points. On the ODIs and T20s, um, I think we're very close to consensus there where we'll be looking at a, a qualifying league for the global events in both those formats. Was not so correct. In terms of scrapping the FTP program, it also has created a void where which uh, some of the minnows, so-called despite Sri Lanka winning the World Cup 20 years ago, still Sri Lanka is considered as a winner. 
And it's difficult for us to get a series against the countries uh, such as Australia and England. So why not go back to the FTP structure rather than having a two-tier structure or a league system, which most likely for two years we won't be getting to play a side like Australia, which has been confirmed by the ICC if we go to a league system. So do you think ICC should go back to an FTP structure, which will be agreed by all votes? The trouble is, of course, is if you go back to an FTP structure. At the moment, ICC has 10 full members who will play test cricket. Other countries have ambitions to play test cricket as well. So it's conceivable that in the next couple of years, we might have as many as 12 teams, even more, wanting to play test cricket. Now, if you have an, uh, an FTP set up along the lines that we used to have, where everyone plays everywhere one over a certain period, over the way, to cater for 12 teams, that cycle will inevitably be a five, six, even probably an eight year cycle. So I'm saying that what we can do is move to a, a league structure, which will effectively give actually what you're trying to achieve uh, to this two country like Sri Lanka more easily than if we just rely on an FTP setup. You're proposing a league st a structure, at the same time you acknowledge the fact that Ashes would remain as a five-match series. So inevitably the big three would again be benefiting, whereas the lower tier countries would not exactly get that same system. No, but uh, I, I, I don't see it that way. I mean, we haven't developed a, the detail of a point system, but how I envisage would be that there would be a certain number of points available for a series. Whether it's a five match series or a three match series, the same number of points will be available. Therefore, an, an England-Australia test, which is part of a five match series, You'd get a certain number of points for winning that test, but it would be proportionately slightly less than you would get for winning a test in a three-match series. So the overall points would be the same, the series would be worth the same number of points, but still providing importance for each test match. I hope that makes sense. And let's face it, we don't want, we've got enough test cricket as it is. We don't necessarily want to be playing 70 test matches a year. You know, we, we, we need to actually, less is more reduce the number of test cricket, but every time a test match is in play, if it's played in Colombo, we want 15, 20,000 people watching. Uh, and quite frankly, if we play too many test matches, that's not going to happen. And to host uh, the Asian American Council, is there any specific targets you mentioned? You said it made sense in terms of HR and certain things like a lot of Asian countries are in that second tier system. But uh, has the uh, International Cricket Board has given any specific targets to be achieved by Sri Lanka? Um, Sri Lanka's role uh, in hosting the Asian Cricket Council is a decision taken by the Asia's Cricket Council itself. ICC is not necessarily involved in that. I think it makes sense to do what the Asian Cricket Council have done in find a permanent place for the Asian Cricket Council and to make use of one of its full members to do so. So I think we, we can be, the Asian Cricket Council can be grateful to Sri Lanka Cricket for hosting them, as I understand it, on a very uh, advantageous financial basis, uh, which is great for, for, for development in the region. But as to whether we've set any objectives um, for the Asian Cricket Council as far as what we want to achieve in this region, um, probably too early to say yes, we have. Um, but in consultation with them, those objectives will be set. And yes, uh, there are 17 countries that make up outside of the full members in this region. Uh, as I said, already three or four of them are on our targeted list for uh, becoming you know, a full member in, in, in the short to medium term. And if we can increase that to seven or eight, then that's what we should be looking at.
registration of, has to be under the corporate law of the country, which is 2007, corporate law of this country. Under the registration of corporation, we have registered. You can't register under registration corporate uh, under the registration of uh, in Sri Lanka because Sri Lanka cricket is an incorporated body. So that is what I told the parliament. For that, individually each members who was serving in the league school has given their personal name to form the incorporation of the cricket aid. Once the cricket aid is formulated and registered under the register of companies, that becomes a incorporated charitable arm. Then we have sent it to ICC. This is our charitable arm, which is cooperated. So that therefore, official recognized charitable arm of Sri Lanka cricket is cricket aid. And we have changed the constitution. In the constitution now we have given power, which will be ratified on this Sunday. The official charitable arm is, as per the constitution of Sri Lanka cricket, has to be approved by Sri Lanka cricket. Earlier we didn't have that provision, therefore we couldn't get it registered under un unincorporated in the ICC. This Kushi Guna Sekhar's organization, have said from this thing, some I can't remember the name. They were going on making money, selling Sri Lanka cricket, using cricketers, raising money. And uh, Sri Lanka cricket didn't have an authority of organizing because we have not given it officially what is our charitable arms all. So that is what happened. So there is nothing else. The ICC is only going by their member. Member is uh, cricket. So cricket has recognized their charitable arm as cricket aid. That is official arm. No one else's arm can be official arm. That is exactly what happened. So the ICC has support. Uh, as far as I know, I don't know the details of this, um, but there's no need for ICC to get involved. Sri Lanka Cricket don't need ICC's approval to accept a charitable organization as their official charity. Uh, the only time we get involved is it, if it involves Sri Lankan cricket team using a logo of a particular organization, be it a, co a commercial organization or a charitable organization. And when that time comes, if there's an application to use a particular logo, we will look and see whether it complies with our current regulations. Uh, and my final question is, uh, hey, the uh, system for countries that can't afford the full system? Yes, so um, as you know, uh, it was only very recently that the BCCI have agreed to use DRS, which uh, makes it easier once all the countries have agreed um, to implement it on a, a universal basis and a, cons a consistent basis across all international and uh, therefore, at our February meetings, there will be a paper going to the Chief Executives Committee and probably to the board thereafter, which sets out exactly what this might entail, how much it will cost, how it will work on a practical basis, um, who can generate revenues from the different technologies. And uh, so all that detail needs to be worked out. It will go into a paper and hopefully approved in February, which will enable us to, wherever international cricket is played, introduce as a minimum standard a certain level of technology which will help the poorer countries uh, uh, who can't afford it on a, a regular basis to have the same system as what might be used in an Ashes series which is generating more money. Okay. 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 ...with the player and his lawyers, his legal team, and they are deciding what, if any, compensation they want to claim. And then that will be put to wider stroke the lab. I'm not sure exactly uh, of the legal ramifications, but as I understand it, anyway, it's in the hands of the player and his legal team in formulating any claim that they might think they have. So, will you want to support if he claims? Uh, well, ICC's role would be is more in facilitating the player and his legal team getting in touch with WADA and the lab to try and settle the matter. Exactly that type of comment. But having a son who plays first class cricket in England, having been involved in cricket, I think you need to understand that 
match fixing is a threat to the sport of cricket. It's a threat to many other sports as well. And in fact, cricket is leading the way in the fight against fixing. Uh, our, amongst all sports, and, and the sports are using what we have done as, as an example, as best practice. Having said that, the, the bottom line is that there are, unfortunately, people around the world who are trying to get involved in corrupt players, corrupt umpires, even corrupt uh, curators. And therefore our focus has been on, our strategy is on prevention, which is, and disruption, which comes through education. So unfortunately players get bombarded with lectures on, on making sure they don't get involved and probably all the players will complain that, oh no, another lecture is coming from ICC on this issue. But actually those, those uh, education programs have been very effectual in making sure that players are not suckered into getting involved. Because, don't forget, it's not a case of the guy walking up to you one day and saying, I'll offer you $50,000 if you get out for less than 10 tomorrow. It doesn't happen like that. It, it's, the, the players are wooed into this relationship and eventually they find themselves they can't back out. So the education program has been very, very effective. And at international level, I'm pretty confident that fixing is not, is not taking place. If it is taking place and the players haven't been caught, then if I was those players, I'd be very nervous because someone will eventually speak and they will be caught in the long run. What we do have to be concerned about is making sure though that because we've hardened the target at the international level, those corrupt individuals are going to start approaching the young players, the women's cricket, other televised cricket. And therefore it's important to work with our members to make sure that those education programs are rolled out even at the domestic level. Otherwise they're going to find softer targets to work on. So I disagree with you, I don't think it's, it's certainly not rampant or common practice in international cricket. Uh, and I can assure you that if we have any evidence of it happening, we will investigate robustly. Lakshman, would you like to come over? Uh, club level, district level, school level. So I think it's important that you go the out here. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, uh, under the pro uh, development programs in the Sri Lanka cricket that we developed, uh, planned out recently, uh, these educational programs are, are given a very important uh, place and uh, I was directed and, uh, to do as much as possible uh, educational programs, education programs to all the players starting from the young players and we have been doing, I have been doing from the under 17, 18, 19, emerging 18 and also most of the national teams. Of course, the national teams are done by the ICC. But yet, uh, I have been going around uh, on the instructions of the president also to most of the clubs, in major clubs, and uh, doing my presentations there. And uh, also, we are building up a certain uh, group of players and officials uh, so that uh, they also take part in these anti-corruption activities rather than the SLC only. So we ask everybody to help us on this if they in the information. Now uh, in this under-19 uh, uh, tournament also, we, uh, I have, uh, we have uh, uh, planned out a certain degree of anti-corruption activities where the players and match officials area that is the heart of the stadium or the venue is being secured and all the liaison officers, venue officers, uh, they are also in, in included in this. Uh, we feel that uh, we must, uh, as the Sri Lankan cricket, we must safeguard the cricket playing young players and also uh, cultivate some discipline uh, within them. So our education program is the main item where we have done all, not only the players, the venue managers, the coaches, umpires, staff, everybody practically, I think everybody has had this. Yeah, we are continuing. Thank you. Ingrid.